All right, good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock, and I will call the 14th regular Common Council meeting to order. Will the clerk please state the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of our lives is to be happy. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Ackley. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. Here. Alderperson Palicki Paneski. Here. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. There are 10 present. All right. Today for the Pledge of Allegiance, we have Scout Troop 3801 who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you're able, can you please stand and remove your hat? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you for that. All right, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our previous meeting, Alder Feldy. I move to approve. The 13th regular council meeting held on October 3rd, 2022. Second. Motion second. Any discussion on the minutes from our previous meeting? Seeing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Any objection? Minutes are approved. All right. Next we have public forum. Um, tonight we do have a full roster for folks for public forum. Per council rules, uh, you needed to sign up ahead of time as well. Um, you need to speak on an item that is related to the agenda specifically. I will give one warning in cons consultation with the city attorney as well. You'll get one warning, you'll get a gavel and a reminder that you need to stay on topic. If you go off topic again, your mic will be cut and we will move on. We have a full agenda that we need to proceed on today too. So thank you, clerk. And it's five minutes as well. And the clerk will remind you. First person is Russ Otten. And please state your name and address. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ross Otten. I'm a citizen of Sheboygan. And your address, please? It's 2522 South 7th Street in Sheboygan. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. I'd like to speak to resolution, uh, excuse me, number 17 on the agenda, resolution 812223. I wanted to just uh, first of all say that my mother and father were not necessarily in this room, but they were on the Common Council about 40 years ago. And I spent a lot of time kind of following them to City Hall. So this is my first time, I think, speaking to this group uh, today, so I appreciate the opportunity. Um, AL, uh, two letters in the alphabet are very, very important in a number of ways. The first one I want to mention is AL. Some of you guys might remember Al McGuire, the coach from Marquette, led them to a national championship in 1977. He brought together a very unique group of men to play basketball. Didn't matter what religion they came from, although Marquette is Catholic. Didn't matter what race they came from, didn't matter. He molded them together into an incredible team that won a national championship. But AL, also is crucial tonight because there is a huge difference between equity and equality and AL is missing in equity. I know that Judy is going to speak next, is going to speak more specifically on those two words, but in essence, equality is giving everybody the opportunity to live the American dream. And equity is a leveling of the playing field so that no one really gets too far ahead. And I think we have a situation tonight. First of all, I appreciate the opportunity for, uh, for you guys to actually want to do something about this. Diversity uh, is hugely important. But as I look at what we have as our 10 alders today, I mean, we have six women. We've got minorities. I mean, we've got it. This is diversity. It's fantastic. 
But diversity should be more than that. Diversity should be about diversity of thought. That is what diversity is crucial for. Because when we only have one thought, and everyone has to fall in line or be ostracized, we have a problem. And I feel like that's where we're going. Right now, it's just so ironic that the no labels group from 10, 15 years ago is the LGBTQ community. I mean, how ironic is that? And yet, what I find really interesting is the women's group, the women's rights group, is now silent <laughs> when they take an opportunity, when they have an opportunity to talk about the trans movement, because they're at loggerheads when it comes to women's athletics. You don't hear a word. Because diversity of thought is not acceptable. Equity is what leads us to that situation. Equity is what led us to the situation, I think, over the last month that has made front page news. And I think it's very sad for a community that the Sheboygan press decided to sensationalize it. We're talking about people's lives here. Every one of you knows that what was stated by Chad Palaszczuk was not stated by him, but a re repetition of what was stated. Yet the press and none of you came to his aid, not one. I don't know why, but I have a feeling, again, it's this equity thing. We can't have this, this diversity of thought. Even when many of you knew that it was wrong. So I applaud you for going forward with diversity, but not equity. I'm sorry, it's equality that we want as citizens. Everybody in this room is equal in God's eyes. We weren't all created equal in terms of talent and riches and all that kind of stuff, but we are equal in God's, lot, in God's eyes, and we need to treat each other that way. Equity, no. Equality, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just before we go to the next uh, speaker, we do have some extra chairs over here. Uh, I know that we're having a little over, overflow crowd. Uh, we just don't want the fire marshal to make any comment. So, All right. The next person is Judy Poole. Could you state your name and address for us, please? Uh, Judy Poole, 18 Ashwood Drive in Sheboygan. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you. Um, I am here tonight to request that you do not suspend the rules and put forth item 17, resolution 81-22-23 until it has been fully discussed by the board with all of the ramifications that this will only be one more step to a disastrous end for Sheboygan's interests and residents. I was under the impression that suspension of rules to adopt was a measure only generally used in an emergency situation. This measure was most likely proposed to appease others who have demanded it. It sounds warm and fuzzy, and who isn't for fairness and quality, right? However, the opposite is true. DEI, or Diverse Equity Inclusion, is an un-American, sexist, racist, and divisive scam. It is also a multi-billion dollar industry. DEI theory has permeated higher education, K through 12 schools, school boards, Fortune 500 companies, sports, prisons, and governments. DEI is not only unnecessary, but it's a dangerous philosophy which promotes the very action it purports to protect. All Americans are already afforded equal protection under our U.S. Constitution and the Federal Rights, Civil Rights Act of 1964. These and subsequent laws prohibit discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. Notice these laws do not mention or protect gender. The attempt to include it has released a Pandora's box of physical, emotional, 
mental and social ills on our country. It is my belief that there is an agenda being pushed onto the general public of which most people are unaware. The definition of equity has been twisted and does not mean the same as equality in which most Sheboygan people believe. Equality means everyone has the same opportunity to become the best they can. Some succeed, some don't. Equity means everyone should be, end up the same and some entities such as the government attempts to make it happen. No rich, no poor, all the same, no matter the efforts put forth. This philosophy has caused division and pain to many people who have had their dreams crushed. It has caused, for instance, tenured professors to quit their professions, elementary school teachers to divide children by race and demand white children apologize to black children for their supposed innate born white privilege and prejudice. Asian university students to be denied entrance since every application is judged through the lens of equity first. Girls training all their lives to be Olympics worthy just to lose qualifying races to men, claiming to be women to beat them because of their innate superior strength. By the way, women are just over half as strong as men in their upper torsos and about two thirds as strong in their lower bodies. Our, fight, our own Department of Defense to lower strength and ability standards so that women could be included in our fighting forces, therefore weakening our defense. Girls have to, having to undress in school locker rooms in front of boys who claim to be girls. Women in all female prisons being raped and impregnated by males incarcerated there because they claim to be transgender. And right here in our own backyard in Keele, Wisconsin, three middle school boys were investigated and charged with harassment under Title IX for mispronouncing a fellow student. This has to stop. We need to use common sense and reason to do that. I'm including some sample articles below of some of the hopefully unintended consequences of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Please take the time to read some of them. Again, I ask that you allow Resolution 81 to go through the general common council path of review, research, and discussion before adopting a procedure which may turn out to be regrettable later. Thank you for your consideration. And I did pass some of, some of this out to Barb with the, with the articles I mentioned. Thank you. The third person is Jamie Hack. Would you first please state your name and address? Absolutely. Jamie Hack, 1722 North 25th Street, Sheboygan. Thank you, you have five minutes. Good evening, my name is Jamie Hack and I am a native resident of Sheboygan County, working with the, in the community for over 15 years and living in the city of Sheboygan for the past three years. I'm an advocate and professional of diversity, equity and inclusion work and strategies through my role at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, as well as championing for real social justice and equity practice within the community of Sheboygan at large. Through my active participation in grassroots, excuse me, grassroots community advocacy groups in the area like Sheboygan DEIB Initiative and more recently the Sheboygan Collective. Oh, and I'm sorry, I did not say, um, this is in response to the agenda item 17. I'm sure you can tell. After reading the article in the press recently regarding a racist slur being quoted in a departmental meeting, in the subsequent way the matter was handled afterwards. Governing requires political efficacy, efficacy and democratic engagement, which means we expect our leaders to model the values, beliefs, and change we collectively seek. If authorities lack understanding and cultural competence, if they are not willing to combat racism and other forms of discrimination, we shouldn't expect the community to be welcoming, resilient, and thriving as well. Change starts from within. We should expect our authorities, the people who represent us and who speak on behalf of the city to know better. That does not only mean a basic level of training, but the requirement to do their homework 
and be more culturally aware. This is knowledge that exists in a variety of forms and is easily accessible. Leadership requires the willingness to learn, the ability to model, and the capacity to own one's missteps. I urge the Common Council to seriously evaluate the personnel placements of Mr. Pelichek and Mr. Wolf and their current and future abilities to serve in their roles with the knowledge, transparency, and values of equity and respect that are so needed in their positions. Implementing a DNI diversity and inclusion programming at the city and county level at this point is a very basic requirement to ensure that we are managed by a diverse workforce in a positive, accepting, and dignified work environment that provides opportunities to individuals of all backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences. At this stage, the Common Council should be steadfast in imposing some real planning and accountability measures within the city budget and strategic plan to ensure diversity, equity, and inclusion practices, processes, and systems are intentionally embedded throughout the work, decisions, and behaviors of the city administ administration. In solidarity, thank you for listening and being open to my feedback. Thank you. Next we have Sarah Ruiz Harrison. Hello, good evening everybody. I am here to talk on <clears throat> agenda number 17, resolution number 812223. Could you state your name and address? <clears throat> Hello, my name is Sarah Reese Harrison, 1517 Illinois Avenue. I reside in Alderman Dean Decker's district. I serve our community on the Board of Education and I'm here today to speak out against the recent remarks that were shared in the Sheboygan Press about the use of the racial slur by a city official. I was born and raised in this beautiful, beautiful, diverse city. And, no one, and, and the one thing that I was taught from my parents and this city, including the public schools, was to mind my manners and respect my neighbors. I was also taught that when I make a mistake, I should accept responsibility and make it right. I was shocked to hear that a racial slur was not just used, but was repeated by a city official. It appears to me that the administrator, Todd Wolf, has issued a non-apology apology. Intent does not equal impact. Intent does not equal impact. Beyond this non-apology, Mr. Wolf appears to be more concerned about someone breaking confidentiality than he does about recognizing the root of what was wrong here. Mr. Wolf and Mr. Pelichek have not accepted responsibility and need to make it right. I have reached out directly to Todd. Thank you, Todd, for returning my phone call today. Um, and I was glad that he called me back today. As public servants, we are entrusted with responsibility to serve the common good by acting in the best interest of our city. Mr. Wolf and Mr. Pelichek, do what is right. Do what is right. Tonight I'm asking that the city of Sheboygan um, conforms to the DEI consultant by formally hiring to lead the city in identifying what next steps should be done. Thank you. Thank you. Last, we have Heather Cleveland. Hi. Hello, Steve. Heather Cleveland. 2505 Erie Avenue. Thank you, you have five minutes. Thank you Common Council for your service in this role as representatives and leaders of our community. I'm here today to support item 17, resolution number 81-22-23. Um, resolution um, in their commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. I grew up in Appleton, Wisconsin. I served in the U.S. Army National Guard, and that included a tour in Iraq from April 2003 to April 2005. I moved to Sheboygan in April 2005. I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering and a master's in urban planning, both from UW-Milwaukee, and I, have, I am an American Institute certified planner 
that holds me to a level of continued education along with a code of ethics. A diversity group was formed in the summer of 2019, and I joined others in December of 2019. This group was later known as the Sheboygan Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging, Belonging Initiative, SDEIBI. During that time, several brainstorming sessions were held, and a vision and mission were both identified. The brainstorming identified two problems as the highest priorities. Number one, lack of government response, and number two, lack of knowledge of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Additional brainstorming led to three possible solutions. Number one, electing a diverse population that represents our community. Number two, all city staff formalized consistent equity training to also include city, county, schools, police, EMS, and fire. And number three, amend city strategic plan to support DEI city programs. In the spring of 2020, the following vision and mission statements were proposed for the, for the group. The vision, we believe in a community that welcomes, honors, and recognizes its strength and diversity. We believe diverse pers perspectives and ways of being drive innovation and make our community stronger and more vibrant. In the mission of the group, we were a diverse group of community activists committed to an equitable inclusive, and inclusive Sheboygan. I volunteered to share, chair the group in June of 2020 and in turn formed a steering committee to help us determine next steps. Committees were formed, strategic plans were prepared in it or attempted, and we hosted several informational ses sessions and educational opportunities, including a racial justice book club and DEIB educational film series, both at the Mead Public Library. An equity report was created in the summer of 2020, but it was never discussed or published. A consulting list was shared to assist with educational opportunities and strategic planning with the city. Several to, to no end, and several people participated in a DEI focus group for the strategic plan, but heard nothing back from the consultant nor the city. I stepped back as chair in June of this year but I, with this SDEIBI group, but I continue the work. The group has shifted to a Sheboygan Collective is now working towards long-term system change with an emphasis on leadership and dignity. At this point, in October 2022, and in light of the recent article published in the Sheboygan Press, what is needed is a commitment to DEIB, yes, but also an assessment of the way our government works. I recently heard a director, say at, a director at the city say the city lacks leadership, but isn't the director in a leadership position? I know this is hard, but we need to shift to not only doing the duties assigned, but evolving the positions that were assigned. Time and time again, I've seen opportunities or gaps, but there isn't a system in place to capture and see it through. Whose job is it to make change? It may start by creating a culture that accepts and embraces change. Let's go back to the first possible solution that was identified from that group, electing a diverse population that represents our community. If that is our goal, that will lead us to increase representation in our leadership and government, one that is not reflective of our community today, where do we begin? One step that I've advocated for directly is increased transparency and accessibility in committees and commissions. I like to use the analogy, two trains running. It's from a civil rights film um, talking about the summer of 1964. It means that we must continue our duties as is while, ev while evolving those positions and the system. The system is the place where we're stuck. An example of this is, in, is with public engagement. Another example of this is an, an assumption that people serve a political position and already know what to do. Another example of this is the inability to advocate for progress because you're not really involved in the change and it feels slightly intentional. And finally, a recommendation that my colleagues and, colleagues and I identified as an opportunity to increase representation, a sense of belonging and ownership is a youth council. The youth are the future, and if we want to, an engaged community, we need to invest in them now. A resolution was passed in March, but it is not enough. Resolutions need a plan and action, even if it's a first step that will be assessed. I ask you today, today to not only pass this resolution, but to create actions, make them public, and ask for accountability from the community so that you can hold others accountable and we can slowly begin to look to the future where DEIB goes beyond checking a box but is a way of being and a future that values dignity along with a balanced budget. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> I think that was five. Right? That was five. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right.
Next item, number five on the council agenda is confirmation of mayoral appointments. City Attorney. Mayor hereby submits the following appointments for your confirmation. Carolyn Richards to be considered for appointment to the Room Tax Commission and Rebecca Stewart to be considered for appointment to the Sustainability Task Force. All right, Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please uh, check out your board doc, excuse <laughs> me, uh, Municode. <laughs> Let me know if that works for you. Nope, not that one. Ten eyes. All right, those are approved. All right. Next is mayoral announcements. All right. There you go, adjust the camera for height. Okay, no laugh out of that one. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for being here tonight. Um, quite a few things to, to mention and acknowledge um, here today. As folks know, it is fall, leaves are falling, and that means our uh, public works crew is hard at work, um, making sure that our, our streets are clean and swept and uh, leaves are collected. So. Um, Check out the DPW's website. Obviously, Mother Nature um, dictates uh, how long the schedule goes, but um, this will go uh, pr primarily out until November um, for, for leaf collection. Please make sure that you're just putting leaves out um, on the curbs. Do not put sticks and yard waste um, and bushes and other, <laughs> other yard waste out there too. Um, creates a lot of uh, stress and strain um, on the equipment that we have. So check out DPW website for more information on leaf collection. Um, it's also October, which means it's fire uh, safety and prevention month. Um, if folks drive around town, you'll see our public, or excuse me, our fire department um, is hard at work raising awareness and education about fire prevention. Um, so these can be simple, quick things as changing your batteries um, in your, your, your fire alarms, as well as making sure that um, you have proper fire extinguishers and many other things. So check out our fire department and their Facebook page and social media for some other fun tips and things that you can do to keep your home safe for Fire Prevention Month. All right, on to proclamations. First, we have um, uh, National Arts and Humanities Month. So I know I have some organizations here today, and if they would please come on up. I believe today we're recognizing several great organizations um, in their community that uh, advocate for the arts and humanities as well. Um, here today, accepting some proclamations are Katie Gladowski from the Wild Center, and they'll have, uh, make some comments as well. We have Kim Meller from the Symphony Orchestra uh, and Garrett Erickson from the library as well. So I'll quickly read these proclamations and uh, I'll issue the proclamation. So whereas the nation's 120 thousand nonprofit arts organizations and the National Endowment for the Arts and National Endowment for the Humanities, the nation's 4,500 local art agencies in communities across this country and the arts districts that have regularly issued official proclamations on an annual basic designated October as National Arts and Humanities Month. The humanities help diversify our communities across the United States, explore their history and culture with the support and partnership of the National Endowment for he the Humanities. And whereas the nation's art and culture sector nonprofits, commercial education is an $877 billion industry that supports 4.6 million jobs, which represents 4.2% of the nation's economy in a large share, large share of GDP that is a powerhouse sector, such as agriculture, transportation, and utilities per stats in 2020, and boasts a $33 billion international trade supply in 2019. Now I, Ryan Sorensen, 
Therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor of City of Sheboygan do hereby proclaim October 2022 as National Arts and Humanities Month. So, would any of you like to say a few words? Yes. All right. <laughs> Hello everyone, Katie Gladuski of the Weill Center. I just want to thank you, Mayor Sorensen, for the recognition of National Arts and Humanities Month. In our community, our arts organizations are all invested in collaborating when possible to support each other and our community members. Um, the handout I have given you is just one example of us all getting together on the same page and sharing what we have offering, offered to our community. This month, we came together to create this for you, and um, here you'll learn more about what our organizations do, who we serve, and our why. We have a specific ask for all of you tonight. Learn and share about our organizations. Take the time to educate yourself and your constituents on the benefits of engaging with our local arts and humanities organizations this October, National Arts and Humanities Month, and throughout the year. Highlight us in your e-blasts, on your website, and in social media posts. And you're always invited to visit any of us for a tour, a chat, or a special experience so you can share your firsthand knowledge with your constituents. With that, we look forward to seeing you soon, and thank you for your previous and continued support. Um, a few other organizations that weren't able to attend today um, there's a long list of different organizations. I uh, just want to acknowledge the Sheboygan County Historical Museum uh, in Sheboy Sheboygan Visual Arts who could not make it today as well. All right, next proclamation, we're gonna be recognizing Community Media Day. So Scott, Eric, wanna come on up for this one? So this is a in-house recognition uh, that, uh, that we'd like to, to recognize today. Um, so a lot of folks know the man behind the camera, uh, Scott, uh, he makes sure that our meetings are accessible, transparent, up on the website, live streaming on Facebook um, as well. So, uh, and YouTube, he's been actually putting a lot of great, now, now this is where I go down the rabbit hole here. Scott's been finding a lot of great old council meetings as well. Um, so if you're a nerd like me, go check out the U WSCS YouTube page. There's a lot of historical, um, uh, council meetings on there from the 80s and 90s. There's there's some fun ones on there. Everyone what knows what my favorite one is, but I'm not going to mention that today here. Um, okay, cool. Whereas sharing the ideas and information helps build common understanding and the common values within a community, and whereas access to information in today's media environment is critical for healthy and functioning community. Whereas community media organizations provides a mean for diverse communities to tell their story, hear each other's stories, and create new stories together. Whereas community media organizations provide people with the skills necessary for their creation, sharing, and consumption of knowledge and ideas throughout the media. And whereas community media is an important resource for partnering in local democratic policies and procedures. Whereas communities will benefit from increased general awareness of viewing audiences for creators, for media content created by and for the community. Now I, therefore Ryan, Mayor of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim October 20th, 2022 as community Community Media Day, and I'll present this to Scott Mielich, who's been our community media guy for so many years. So Scott, you want to say anything? Thank you, Mayor, for uh, the recognition of uh, Community Media Day, which is a national, uh, nationally recognized day. And I appreciate all of you coming out uh, to witness uh, this proclamation. That's, <laughs> Uh, bodes well for community media in uh, Sheboygan, so thank you. Good job. Then right. also did want to recognize Eric Bushman, who's our director of IT, who oversees uh, WSCS as well, community media. So thank you again, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to make a few comments before we jump into the rest of the agenda today. We have a full... Uh, agenda um, and a lot to discuss tonight. Well, we all know why a lot of us are here tonight um, as well, and there's been a lot of conversation over the past few days, and it's no secret that we as the city, as an organization, government, we have a lot of issues and challenges ahead of us that we need to fix. Over the last several days, I know myself, other elders on the city council have heard from many of our constituents that have provided input on how we can improve. I want to reassure 
folks out there in Sheboygan that I hear you and I hope others hear you as well. Just like many other organizations out in our community, we have a lot of work to do and make major improvements ahead of us. Nobody is perfect, it's never gonna be an easy ride and there's never one solution to fix all our problems. And we'll probably make some mistakes along the way. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging mean many different things to many individuals. However, these are not just buzzwords. And these aren't something that we do just to check a box. Equity work needs to be a fundamental component of government operations and is woven, it needs to be woven in the work that we do every single day with the 450 plus employees that we have to provide essential city services. Sheboygan is an increasingly diverse community and we are so blessed as a community that we have so many individuals that chose Sheboygan as their home that come from many different walks of life. Making sure that we can build a community where everyone can thrive is a cornerstone of providing a strong quality of life right here in the city of Sheboygan. We have a lot of progress that we've made over the last couple of months, but we still have a long way to go. I want to challenge our elders as we move forward with the strategic planning process that we make sure that diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, as well as many other uh, components are incorporated and integrated within our strategic plan. We can't do this alone. We need to support our team. We have 450 advocates and employees within the city as an organization. We need to make sure that we're providing resources for everyone to succeed as well. We also need to make sure that city council provides leadership and direction on this as well and is involved in the process. Additionally, we need to make sure that the public is involved as well. It's, a, it's, a, it's gonna be a bumpy ride and we need folks to continue to hold us accountable and provide feedback. I wanna reassure folks that and state here today that the city is not a safe space for racism and racial tropes as well, and it can never be. We got a lot of work ahead of us. I know we can do better and we will do better. Thank you. All right. All right, next we'll have items eight through 13 on the consent agenda, Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs and adopt all re resolutions and ordinances. Second. Is there a motion Then there's a second? Any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your Muni code. Ten eyes. All right, those items are approved. Next report of officers, item 14 and 15 will be referred to the licensing hearing public safety committee. Next is resolution number 16, number 802223, but older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski deeming the director of human resources and labor relations or in the absence of the director of human resources and labor relations, the finance director slash, slash treasurer to be the plan coordinator for the city of Sheboygan's Mission Square Retirement Plan. Alder Feldy, excuse me, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your mini code. Ten eyes. All right, that item is approved. Next is item 17, resolution number 812223 by Elder Person Speldy, Flicky Paneski, and Prella, reaffirming the Common Council's commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Alder Feldy? I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Alder Perella. Yeah, I would like to move to um, add, to amend the resolution. All right, please state your amendment. 
I would like to add I would like to add two sentences to the resolution to reflect one the common council understands that leaders shall not offer shall offer no excuses for offensive behavior and second sentence the Common Council understands that leaders need to operate in full transparency and accountability. I propose to uh, add these two sentences after the first two in the existing resolution. Just for clarification, Alder Prella, are you asking to put this in the whereas clause? That's correct. All right. Thank Could you, you state There's... the second one again? Please state the second sentence for the clerk. Whereas the Common Council understands that leaders need to operate in full transparency and accountability. Does the clerk have it? Yes, thank you. Is, there's been a motion to amend to add those two stated sentences. Is there a second? Second. A second by Alder Rust. I see that some alders have queued in. The, the discussion at hand now is on a motion to amend the resolution. Any specific comments on the amended resolution? Seeing no questions for the amendment, this can this be a voice vote? You can do it as a person. Okay, all those in favor of adding those two sentences as the amendment, please state aye. 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 Any objection? State nay. All right, that amendment is approved. Now back to the main motion as amended. Alder Ackley. So I just wanted to say that usually I'm one of the more quiet members of the council and I like to listen to what my fellow members have to say about council business because I know my opinion on an item, but I wanna hear how my colleagues on the council have interpreted it. However, this issue is one that I believe needs to be addressed immediately. Not everyone knows that I'm biracial because it shouldn't be a talking point. I say this because we are all human. However, I need to bring up in this conversation to explain that I do understand the impact of words on a profoundly personal level. As a child and even as an adult, I received inappropriate comments about my ethnic background. I have received inappropriate comments about my gender and physical appearance. Words can and do cause injury, no matter the intent of the person speaking them. But with that being said, we also need to think about intent. What was the goal and the purpose of inappropriate language? The word choice appears highly out of line, but was not meant to be used towards someone. It was used to describe another person's choice of words. It was lousy delivery and a poor choice, not to find other descriptive words to get the point across or deliver the message. I'm often called upon as an HR professional to develop model and support initiatives that foster cultural change and improve employee relations. This situation is no different. While it is not within the scope of the responsibility for the council to oversee the city department's day-to-day -day operations, we are the collective voice of the residents. From the calls, emails, and in-person conversations with residents that I have had recently about this issue, people are angry. I do not believe that the communication was becoming of someone representative of the city's public face and leadership. I feel like all of us should be holding ourselves to a higher standard. We must be mindful of our words, even when quoting others. When I look at this situation from the lens of HR, we are in the midst of a public and employee relations nightmare. It is time to implement actionable change. It is not time to provide lip service. An apology is the first step, but it will not erase what has already been communicated. We cannot keep taking three steps forward only to stumble back two more. This entire situation reflects poorly upon all levels of the city. I do not believe this is who we are, but unfortunately, this is who we are now in this moment. We have an opportunity to make real changes to ensure equity and inclusion at all levels of the city. This is an opportunity for the city administrator to shine and to demonstrate his leadership abilities and to implement policies to ensure that this type of situation never happens again. Now is the time for a change. It's been this way for years, but enough is enough. The time is now. As a resident of Sheboygan, a person of color, and a collective voice of District 4, I demand that we hold ourselves to a higher standard, especially those who represent leadership within the city. We can do better. We can do better, and we can be better, and the time to do so is now. So let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Ackley. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I've... I believe I've said this before, I will 
say it again, I do not like it when we pass a resolution that does not actually have any actions in any of the clauses. If the therefore be it resolved can be replaced with we think, we believe, we feel, we are not doing our job. We are the policy making body of the city. If the sentiments in the resolution are what the council wants to be telling our citizens and any other observers that they are what we believe, we need to do that through the policy that we are passing. We can't just pass one resolution that has platitudes on it. And I say platitudes because to me, this, this is clearly a response to the article that was just written. The fact that we are having a reactionary response to it cheapens the words. I want to see the council express its will through actual action. As such, I will not be supporting the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Mitchell. Any other alders wishing to speak? Anyone else? Final call. This is a roll call vote. Please refer to your muni code to vote on the resolution as amended. Alder Decker. Nine ayes, one no. All right, that item is approved. That item is approved. Next item, 18 reports of committees. Next is RC number 110-22-23 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 77-22-23 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, authorizing the creation of a crisis co-response pilot program in conjunction with Sheboygan County and authorizing the expenditures of certain funds to support the program. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. Second. Motion second. Any discussion on this item? Okay. Um, I will just make a quick comment uh, as well. This has been an initiative and partnership uh, not only with the city of Sheboygan, but our friends over at uh, Sheboygan County as well. Um, this has been one of the, the recommendations through the several uh, community um, involved task groups that we have to help support our community with the, the city's uh, $22.8 million in American Rescue Act funds as well. So I'm excited to see that this item is moving forward and that we'll be able to continue our partnership with Sheboygan County. All right. With that, there's been a motion and second. This is a roll call vote. Please refer to your Mooney code. Ten eyes. That item is approved. Next is item number 19, 111-22-23 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 78 2223 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Flicky Pineski, authorizing adopting certain changes to the city's medical benefit plan and dental plan, effective calendar year 2023 coverage, and establishing the monthly premium equivalent rate for January 2023 coverage and thereafter. Elder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? Please refer to your, your mini code. <laughs> Sorry. I was on autopilot there for a second. Thank you. Ten eyes. All right, that item is approved. Next, item 20, report of committee number 112 2223 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred general ordinance number 11 2223 by Elder Persons Prelda, Feldy, Ramey, Rust, and Salazar, amending section 82 1 
of Sheboygan's Municipal Code to provide for a minimum wage of $15 per hour for all City of Sheboygan employees whose compensation is under the authority of the Common Council and set by the City Employees Classification and Compensation Program. Alder Perella. I move to pass the resolution. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Alder Decker. Uh, I will not be supporting this because of the fact that uh, I feel that what it, what, what it will do is will price us out of certain positions. Um, the reasoning behind it, uh, I think that the um, positions like the mayor's intern, um, also uh, certain uh, seasonal help uh, will basically take us out of the, we won't be able to have the positions. We either, we either, if we can't pay $15 an hour for some of those positions and we just won't have the positions then and uh, I don't want us to, I don't want to see us locked out of that, so. Thank you, Alder Decker, Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor, I too will not be supporting the resolution tonight. I suppose my comments will be short because I will echo the previous speaker on, I believe, all accounts. Uh, <coughs> but also looking back to the time that went into the wage scale that the ink is not yet dry on that we just passed. As I said in committee, we didn't just pass the final chart that was showing the positions and where they line up. We passed the methodology behind that that decided where everything was being placed. The big reason for doing that is we did not have any methodology that I'm aware of that we were following when setting wages previously to that. And there just wasn't any consistent outcome of the process. This was supposed to make sure that everything stays fair and consistent moving forward. If weeks after we have first implemented the program, we are already making the first exception to the methodology, we may as well not have put it in the place in the first place. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Mitchell. Alder Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Um, though it'd be nice to have everybody get $15 an hour, some of the budgets that are required to be made uh, for the, uh, the DPW and how they get worked on in our parks in our, on our expressways and everything else. This is a road to have that stuff contracted out because eventually it'll be too expensive for us to do. And someone's gonna come to the common council or the department and say, you know what? I can get the very same job done for less. And he won't be paying those people $15 an hour. I believe uh, currently in our school system, they contract out for cleaning services does anybody know if those people make $15 an hour? I don't know. They do? They make more than $15 an hour? Well, then they got a good, or good organization. Okay, so I will not be supporting this because one, again, I wanted to adopt the pay plan that we've already been working on, and I'll go with that. Thank you, Alderman Heidemann. Uh, any other elders? Alder Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the reason I support this is because I support $15 an hour minimum wage. Um, I, do, I, don't, I don't care if they're a McDonald's worker or they're somebody that works at the library. Um, uh, I just want people, I'm not bringing any age or <laughs> anything else into it. Just I want people to make $15 minimum. And I don't think the city has a heck of a lot of people at, at below that, that, that wage. So I don't think we're going to spend a lot of money on a lot of people to get them up to that $15 an hour wage. Thank you, Alder Feldy. Alder Flicky Paneski? I would like to uh, continue down the dollar amount road. Um, can our finance director tell us what the impact of this might be? Director Krieger. Thank you. Based on hours of the past year for seasonal employees, for example, and I did include the library employees um, with the assumption that they would pass a similar um, ordinance or resolution to include the $15, I priced it out to about fifty to $60,000. Thank you. Alder Ramey. The cost of living has just skyrocketed across the nation and we've seen it in Sheboygan. People deserve to have a living wage. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Ramey. 
any other elders looking to speak? Anyone else? Third and final call. Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Will people please refer to their meeting code. Seven ayes, three noes. That item is approved. Next is report of committee item number 114, 22, 23 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred committee number 122, 23 presented to council older persons, Feldy and Flickipaneski submitting a communication from James Slickman, Senior Vice President of Advocate Aurora Health regarding Aurora Sheboygan Medical Center lot line adjustment for the property commonly known as 2507 North 7th Street. Alder Feldy. Um, I ask to support this, please. Um, We're looking for a motion to accept and file. Okay, I'll make the motion then. Second. There's been a motion second. Any discussion on this item? Alder Flicky-Paneski. Thank you. Uh, the former Memorial Hospital is in my district and I have talked with both Aurora as well as um, the homeowners and um, they are all in agreement and they are in agreement with the city. So I recommend that we pass it. All right, thank you for those comments. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your muni code. And I. That item is approved. Next is report of committee number 11, 15, 22, 23 by the licensing hearing and public safety committee to whom was referred resolution number 74, 22, 23 by Alder Persons Feldy and Ackley authorizing the Sheboygan Police Department to apply and receive fundings for the Wisconsin Department of Administration 2022 Law Enforcement Agency grant. Alder Feldy. Alder Feldy. Oh, sorry. Um, I support this and we're um, looking for a motion to accept the resolution. And yes, and I make a motion to support. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote as well. Please refer to your muni code. Oh, no, it's me. Ten eyes. All right, that item is approved. Next is item 23, other matters authorized by law, city attorney. Thank you, the only other matter is RO 74-22-23 by the city clerk submitting a request from Zach Cotter for approval to hunt deer on a section of woods within the city limits. All right, and that'll be referred to the public works committee. Next is a contemplated closed session, Alder Feldy. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851F, Wisconsin statute for preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems, which if discussed in public would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person involved in such problems. Second. There's been a motion and second to go into closed session. This is a roll call vote as well. Please refer to your muni code. Ten eyes. That item is approved. We'll convene in closed session in about five minutes. We'll be meeting in 305. We'll be adjourning this meeting after closed session and then we'll be having our committee the whole meeting.
for individuals interested in that meeting as well. So. <laughs> Well, it's up to you.